Hi guys, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be learning about unit testing. So this is a unit testing crash course, and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to get started writing your own unit test. So we're going to talk about what unit test is, why we need it, and then we're going to dive into all the practical details of how to actually write your own unit test. So without wasting any time, we're going to get straight into the video. Before we get started, I want to say a huge thank you to Codium AI for sponsoring this video. So Codium AI is a platform for automating unit tests. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know to get started writing your own unit test. And I'm also going to show you how to use Codium AI to automate this unit test. So writing unit tests can also be stressful and it can be time consuming. So once you know how to write unit tests, then I'm going to show you how to use this platform to automate that process. So instead of writing everything from scratch, this platform is going to allow you to just generate your unit test in seconds. So that is the great thing about Codium AI. And I'm also going to show you other AI features that they have that is going to help you while writing code. So Codium AI is a free extension that you can download on your code editor. So they support both VS Code and JetBrains. But for this video, we are going to be using VS Code. So just make sure you have Codium AI installed because we're going to be using it in this video. So later in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to automate unit tests using this platform. So make sure you have this installed. You just need to open up your VS Code and under extensions, search for Codium AI and then click on install. So once you have that done, I'm going to show you how to automate tests later in this video. So Codium AI supports all programming languages, although in this video, we're going to be using just Python, but it supports all languages. Now, having all of this said, let's get straight into the video. Unit testing is a fundamental aspect of software development where individual units or components of a software application are tested in isolation. Now, these individual units are mostly functions or methods, and it is a crucial part of software development process, and it is aimed at ensuring that each part of the code functions as intended. So the idea is basically to validate that each unit operates correctly on its own, independent of other parts of the application. So why do we need unit testing? Now I'm just going to give you a few reasons why we need unit testing. The main one and the most obvious one is early bug detection. So unit testing helps in identifying problems early in the development cycle, making them less costly and very easy to fix. So because we can easily identify bugs based on functions or method, we know exactly where to fix them, we know exactly what is wrong. That is why unit testing is way easier for us to you know fix our bugs when we find them and another reason is also it simplifies integration so basically by ensuring that each unit works correctly the process of integrating this unit becomes very straightforward and less error prone now there are also various reasons that could list like tens or hundreds another one could be like just improving your code quality in general you know having unit tests just make sure that your code has a good quality and there's nothing wrong with your code that is just another reason so there are various reasons why we need to use unit tests it is very important and i'm going to go into details of exactly what we're going to be doing in this video so i'm going to be explaining unit tests to you practically using the python programming language and we're going to be using a framework called pytest and another framework called unit test so without wasting any time, let's get started and I'm going to open up my VS Code right now. Now the first thing that we're going to do is to come into VS Code. So I just open up VS Code and I open up a folder named testing. So just open up a project or any folder on VS Code so we can get started. So right now we're going to be looking into the fundamentals of unit testing in Python using a framework called PyTest. So PyTest is a powerful testing framework in Python. And it makes it easy for us to write sample tests yet scale to more complex functional testing also. So I'm going to show you how to use this PyTest framework in Python right here to write normal functions and then test those functions. So we're going to be talking about the core concept of unit testing with PyTest, you know, how you can, as I said, test functions, how you can write assert statements, which we're going to be talking about in a bit. And that's what we're going to be doing. So the first thing that we need to do is to actually install PyTest. And for us to do this, it's just the same as installing any other Python library or framework. So what you need to do is to come into VS Code right here. As I said, make sure that you have like a folder opened. So I just created a folder named testing on my desktop and I opened it here on VS Code. So once you have that opened, what you can do is to just 
pop up a terminal so we're going to bring up a terminal right here and to install pytest i'm going to say pip3 install pytest now this is going to install pytest for me as you can see it says requirement already satisfied this is because i already have pytest installed on my computer but if you don't have it installed it should go ahead and install that for you and note that if you're on a windows when you're trying to install do not add 3 after pip so just say pip install pytest so only do pip3 install pytest if you are on a mac so now with that said and we have pytest installed let's get straight into this so i'm just going to show you the basic structure of unit testing in pytest and what i'm going to do is to first create a normal function when i create this function then we're going to create like a testing file or a testing function also for that particular function that we created so what i'm going to do is to come in here and i'm just going to say app.py i'm going to close this i'm going to increase this a bit so you can see it better and now what i'm going to do is to just create a basic function that takes two inputs so it's going to take two numbers and it's going to return the addition or the sum of those numbers so in, to do this in python very easy we just need to say def add numbers and let's just say the first one is num1 second one will be num2 and then we're just going to return yeah the sum of those numbers return num1 plus num2 so this is a very basic function as i said what it does is that it just takes two inputs or two parameters and then it returns the addition of those parameters so that is what this does and now we're going to write a unit test for this so we're going to try to test if this is actually going to work right and i'm going to explain the structure of just writing this test so to create a test first of all we don't need to create classes we just need to write test functions directly so that is why we like or that is why i like pytest and that is why it is widely used because you don't really need to like write classes just create a test function so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create so right here i'm just going to create a new form i'm going to name it tests so that's the folder i'm going to create and in here i'm going to create something named src so you don't have to create this exactly how i'm doing it I'm just creating random like folders. So in this SRC, that's where my file is going to be. So my app.py. But in tests, that's where my tests underscore. So what I'm going to, so what we want to do now, we want to create another file where we will actually test this particular function, right? So for us to create this file, I just created this file under this test folder and then this normal app.py under the src folder but what i'm going to do is i want to create a file to test as i said but for us to be able to do this we need to start the file by adding this prefix so this test underscore we need to make sure that is in the file name for pytest to recognize that this is a testing file so once we say test underscore then we can say whatever we want to say so i'm going to say app.py so now in is we we pytest gonna recognize this as a testing file because there's test underscore and since we are trying to test something inside this app.py it's just automatically going to see it well that that doesn't really matter whatever we name here we just need to make sure this is you know, perfect and as, again you can kind of structure this however you want to structure this once you run py the command to actually run the test everything is going to work so i just want to make sure we know that now in the test file what we're going to do is to import this particular function in here and i'm just going to do that right now so i'm going to say from so we can say src so src is in this folder src dot app so app is the python file and i want to import add numbers that is the name of the function and now i could actually write the function so once again you need to make sure you have this prefix text underscore once you have this prefix and the name of your function pytest is going to recognize that as a function for testing so now we can say we're testing add underscore numbers and what we're just going to do now is to say assert so this assert structure what it is used it is used to basically 
require like an output so i'm going to first write an a line and i'm going to explain this to you so we're going to say assert add numbers and we're going to give it two values two and three equals five so what this is saying is that when we run this add numbers function and we give it the values two and three so once we come in here so if you run this function and we give it the parameters two and three it should return the sum of two and three and that should be equals to five that's what this asset does it kind of tells us what we should be expecting so it checks that this should be equals to this so think of it like you know like basically just comparing that this is equals to this to make sure that that test has been passed so if this is true then obviously that test was passed so that's what we use assert for very easy and straightforward i'm just gonna add three more you know just to make sure that everything actually works so we're gonna say assert again and let's just say add numbers and this time around we're just gonna say minus one and one so once we add minus one and one this should give us zero that's a good one to test now let's test for another negative number but this time around two negative numbers so let's say something like minus one and minus one once this is added together this should give us minus two i think this is good so this is enough to test we've given it basically different use cases when we have two positive we have a positive a negative and a positive and then we also have two plus two negatives so now that we've you know done this let's just try and test it out i'm going to open this up i'm just going to clear out the terminal i'm going to press ls to see where i am so i'm in here so this is where i am in this folder testing folder what i'm just going to do is to say pytest and now no matter how you structure this whether this is in here or this is not in here like the testing file whether it's the same as this or it's somewhere else as long as it's under this folder that we're trying to run this command on pytest is going to locate that test file and then run that test it doesn't matter where you actually put this you could do it anywhere you want so you're going to see now that once i run pytest if i come here now some files are going to be created we'll talk about that in a bit if i come here as you can see it says one test passed in no point no one seconds so as you can see that this is where the test session started and then right here this was the folder that was run and it collected one item which was this particular file and this particular function and as you can see as i said we didn't run this command in the folder where this test app.py is but we it located this particular file because it recognized the pattern we gave it so because we were able to name this file with the prefix test underscore it recognized that this is a test file and it went ahead and ran that and as you can see it says the test function in there which was just one test function was passed successfully so this is the basic structure of running a basic test in python so this is how we use pytest to run a basic test so once again let's just go over what we did the first thing we did was to create normal python function so we created an app.py file and then in there we created a function and it's just a basic function that takes two parameters and then return the sum of those parameters now to actually create the testing for that function we have to create a file named test underscore app.py and then in that file we created the functions using this assert right here so as you can see this assert statement was used to make sure that this test was successful so this is a very important statement that you have to know when using pytest to run or to make unit testing so i hope you understood what we've done to this point so to this point what i've done is just to introduce you to pytest and writing basic test functions but now we're actually going to dive deeper into that so we're going to be testing for various scenarios so i'm going to show you how to write unit tests for a variety of input scenarios and I'm going to show you how to understand and how to interpret the output from PyTest. Because right now it just showed like one passed in 0 0.01. But what does all of this actually mean? So I'm going to explain all of this. But before we do that, let me just close this tab. I'm going to come back in here and then we're going to write a, a new function. So we've, done, we've been dealing with numbers. Now let's deal with strings. So what I'm going to do is right here in app, I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to say def. I'm just going to write a basic function to reverse a string. So it's going to take a parameter and that parameter is going to be a string and it's going to return the reversed version of that particular string. 
so reverse string and let's just say s is the parameter and for us to reverse the string in python very easy just s with square brackets so we have two colons and do minus one this is going to return the reverse string so what this does is i'm just going to comment this out so if i give it a parameter of let me say s is equals to tommy then it's going to return i'm going to say return going to return i m o t right it's just going to return the reverse version of the string so that's what this does right so now we can use this to write tests so we're going to write tests for various scenarios as i said so we're going to write tests to check for numbers no not for numbers we're going to write tests to check for just normal strings normal characters we're going to write for special characters like dollar sign i'm also going to write for like just a blank you know a blank input the part blank word something that is not there and let's just see what it gives us i'm gonna remove this save this and right here in test app now i'm gonna write the test so from src.app we want to import reverse string so just like we did we're gonna have to create a whole new testing function so what we need to do now is to create one test function and the first test function that we're gonna create is just to so i'm just gonna say dev so i'm just gonna give it a normal string just a normal word so i'm gonna say dev test reverse string normal so what this does is that we're going to use assert so this assert statement as i explained earlier is that it allows us to just compare the values so basically what we are giving it and what is giving us back so we want the the value to be the same so we want so if i say the reverse of hello should be something we want that to be the response we get when we run the test so assert is just basically allowing us to check if that particular function is working properly when we give it a particular input so what i'm going to do now is to say reverse string and i'm going to give it input of hello and the reversal of hello should be o l l e h so this is what i am expecting back from the test so now if i save this and i pop this up right here and i say pi test it says one pass right here which is good first of all this is just normal you you didn't see any change from what we ran before so what i'm going to do is to add like two more tests and then i'm going to explain very well what all of this means so i'm going to say dev and now i'm just going to test reverse so let me test reverse for like an empty string so i'm going to say string empty so now i'm going to use assert reverse string and this time around, I want to give it just a blank and empty string. And if we give it this, the reversal of this should just also be a blank and empty string. So this is what we're expecting right here. So what this is just saying is if we have a blank string, the reversal of that should be a blank string. So that's what is going to happen here. And the next thing is to give it like, uh, let's say special character. So I'm going to say test reverse. underscore string underscore special characters like this and also note that you must add this test prefix before every every name of the function so this prefix must be in the name of the function just for pytest to know that is a test function that's what we did for everything and now we're going to assert again and reverse string and this time around we're going to give it special characters so let me say exclamation mark and i could give it the at and i could give it the hashtag and the dollar sign so now the reversal of this should be dollar sign at so actually dollar sign hashtag at then exclamation mark so this is what we should get back now let's quickly go through what we did we first wrote this particular function to just give it 
you know test for a normal string so once we give it hello it should give us the reversed version of that now we wrote another one to test if we give it an empty string it should give us an empty string back and the last one is for special characters so even if we give it special characters it should still reverse those special characters normally like it would do in the normal string now if you know this cell let's just go ahead and test this particular function so i'm gonna no, i'm not actually running this i'm just gonna cut this out but right here i'm gonna run pytest so now as you can see it says three passed that means all of these functions all of these tests unit tests that we specified in here were passed but how do you actually know everyone that was passed so it basically uses two different like structures or, or statements to show us that a particular function was passed and another function wasn't passed so right here you can see that we have three dots so each of these dots represent all of these but functions respectively so this first dot represent this test function this second dot represent this test function this dot dot represent this test function so a dot is going to be shown when a particular test was run successfully so because this test ran successfully now we see dot this test runs successfully we see another dot and same goes for the last test now if a test was failed we're going to see f so f is used to kind of show that this test was failed and i think it's going to be in the color red so you're going to see it very clearly that this test was failed so let's say one of these didn't work for example if we say the first one if the first one didn't work and it failed then this is just going to say f dot dot because the second and third still worked but the first one didn't work so if this didn't work and these two worked then it's going to say dot f dot let me show you what i mean so i'm intentionally just going to give it uh gonna, just gonna you know make a mistake right here so i'm gonna do it for this middle function so what i'm gonna do is instead of it returning or giving us uh or expecting it to give us a blank response i'm gonna put h in there now this is wrong this this test should be failed because once we give it reverse string and a blank parameter python is gonna give us back a blank parameter but then we are saying we are expecting it to give us back the letter H, which is not possible. So that particular test is going to be failed. But now I'm going to show you what is going to show here when a test is failed. So you will, you know, know that. Now what I'm just going to do is to come here and say pi test. Now as you can see, I'm going to expand this a little bit. And I'm going to close this. What you can see now is that uh, it says one test failed and two passed. So right here you can see this should be passed but this should be failed and this should be passed so now let's read the dots so if you come in here you can see it says dot for the first one so that means the first function was passed successfully it says f for the second one that means the problem is from this particular function the second one so this is why i said this dot and f represent all the test functions respectively because this dot right here represents this the second one in this case is an f which means that was failed represents this this last dot represents the last one so this is good because it allows us to know which function there is problem with and it kind of also tells us the function the i mean sorry the error so right here you can see that it says there's an assertion error assert this is equals to this so we are trying to say because the value that was actually returned was blank and the value that we expected it to give was h so it's saying this is not equal to this there is an error so this is how you can easily read uh, these tests so i'm just going to put this back to how it was and i'm going to save it i'm going to pop this up right here and right now again i'm going to run pi test and it should give me three past and dot 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 so this right here is how you can read the responses from pytest now we're going to be looking into pytest fixtures so pytest fixtures is a powerful tool for creating reusable test components and now we're going to be discussing the scope around this so as i said fixtures is a tool for creating reusable you know test components but they are basically functions that are run by pytest before the actual test functions so they are used to set up like a state a specific test environment or state 
Now, as I said earlier, the purpose for this is because they provide a flexible way to create and configure the data or state needed for tests, improving you know the test clarity and also reducing code duplication, which also brings us back to the reusability I talked about. Now, without wasting any time, I'm just going to show you how to create a basic fixture. Fixture. So creating a fixture is quite easy. We're just going to have to use like a, a particular structure and I'm going to show you how to do that. So right now we're going to create a fixture that just returns a sample data structure and this data structure is going to be a list. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to close this. We're going to come back to app. I'm going to get rid of all of this. Now, whenever you're creating a fixture in PyTest, you need to make sure you have this at PyTest dot fixture and now you can have the normal function so as i said this function is gonna be returning a basic data structure and in this situation is gonna be a list but before we can even use pytest we need to import it so what i'm just gonna do is to say import pytest now that is done now let's just return a sample data so now we're gonna return Let's say one to five. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five. So now that is what this particular function does. But now I'm going to show you how to actually use this fixture in tests. So for us to use this fixture in tests, I'm going to show you how to demonstrate the use of this sample data or the use of this sample fixture in a test function. So this sample data now, it, it's, it's basically a function but you can think of it as a fixture function. So now we can use it in tests. What we're not going to do is to just come in here and I'm going to write a new test. I'm going to get rid of all of this and then we'll say from slc.app, I'm going to bring in sample data. Now we can use this data in here to run tests. So let's do something like can checking if the sum of the data will be correct. So we can say def, let's just say test underscore sum. Remember, you must add this test underscore prefix to make sure everything works fine. And we're going to give it a parameter of sample data. And then we're going to assert sum of sample data should be equal to 15. Because if you do 1 plus 2, that is 3, 3 plus 3, that is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, and 10 plus 5 is 15. So this is what this should give us. So what, what happens is that PyTest automatically injects this fixture right here into the test function right here based on the function's parameter name. So the name is sample data. And what it does is that, as I said, it's injecting this particular fixture into this test right here. And it's using that using the function name. So that is basically what PyTest does in the background. And we're just going to run this now to make sure everything works perfectly fine. And what we're just going to do is to say, actually, no, we're not running it like that. We're just going to say PyTest. PyTest says one passed, which is very good. So it gives us the dot, which means this runs successfully with this particular one right here. So that is good. This is what we want. But now let's test to see if, let's say, something goes wrong. So we can say dev and we'll say test. So now let's test to get the length of that particular list. So I'm just going to say length. I'm going to give it sample data. And now I'm going to assert len of sample data should be equals to. So the sample data is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 be equals to let's say six if we say six this should fail this shouldn't give us the answer now let's try it out i'm going to bring up back the terminal and right here i'm going to run pi test and as you can see it says one passed and one failed if i come up here right here you're going to see that it has this green dot for the first one but f this red f for the second one now this is because of what we talked about earlier this showcase this respectively now if you come down here, it's going to tell us the exact problem. So there's an assertion error. So what happens is that once we say asset length of sample data, length of sample data is five. 
and that is not equal to 6 so this is where the error is coming from but i will change it back to 5 come here and it's by test you can see that it says 2 runs perfectly fine so as you can see the main thing in this is just to make sure that you're able to create your fixture and then use that fixture in right here in your testing functions now we are going to be looking into parameterized testing i'm going to show you how to use the parameterized testing feature to run the same test function with different input so parameterized testing allows you to test the same function with different set of arguments enabling extensive coverage of possible input scenarios so the benefit of this is that it reduces code duplication and it makes it easy for you to add new test cases without having to write new test functions. So without wasting any time, let me just go straight into showing you how to do this. So the first thing we need to do is to create a function. So right here, I'm just going to give have a new example. So we don't need any of this. So I'm just going to create a function that checks if a particular number or a particular input is an even number or not. So what I'm going to do is to say def is underscore even and it's going to take a parameter named num and now it's going to return num percentage to equals zero. So if num percentage to equals zero, if this returns true, that means that number divided by 2, the remainder is 0. So any number that is divided by 2, if the remainder is 0, that number is an even number. But if the remainder is 1 or any other number, but mostly 1, then that means that that number is an odd number. So it's going to return false. Right? So that is what this basic function does. Now what we're going to do is to test, run test for this function, but use parameterized test. So what I'm going to do is to first import that particular function in here. So I'm going to say is even. And now for me to use the PyTest decorator, I need to import PyTest in here just like we did earlier. And now I'm going to do at PyTest dot mark dot parameterize. This is how you parameterize a particular test function. And now you're just going to open brackets and in there, we're going to say, we're going to have like a peer and we're going to say norm and expected. So this norm specifies the argument or the parameter that we're giving it. And then expected is the answer or is basically what we want or what should happen to that number. So for example, if we give it two, two divided by two is one remainder zero. So that means this is going to give us true. So if we give it two as a norm, the expected should be true. Then that test is going to work successfully. But now let's actually give it the, you know, the values. So now what we're going to do is to have a square bracket and we're going to have normal bracket. And if you give it two, as we said, it's going to be true. Now to put another particular input, we're just going to add comma, open the bracket. Now if you give it three, so 3 divided by 2 is 1, remainder 1. So the remainder is not equal to 0. So that means that should be false. And now if we give it 4, let's open another one, that should be true. So this is what we want. Now the next thing that we just need to do is to now actually create that test function. So we're going to say def, let's just put it right here. Remember, we need to have the test prefix, test underscore prefix. So let's say test is even. And we're going to take num and expect it in here. And then we're going to assert. But what we're going to do now is we're going to assert is even. We're going to give it an argument of num. And that should be equals to expected. So now what this is saying is that whatever the value of num is, the output should be expected now this expected as we said is what we are expecting the output to be so this is how this is going to run on the back end so what's going to happen is when we run this test it's going to run this assert and it's going to say is even num it's going to kind of loop through all of this and treat them as separate tests so it's going to first run this and give two as num so 
the value right now is two is num and true is expected so now it's going to say is even num if we come back in here is even num which is is even two is going to run two divided by two which is one remainder zero so that means true so it's going to return true and because it returns true and the expected value is also true that test is going to be run successfully we're going to do the same for three we're going to do everything the value is going to be for norm is going to be three it's going to run is even three and then once we come here return three divided by two we have one remainder one one is not equal to zero so it's going to return false so this is false so false is equals to false right that means the test runs successfully and the same also for the last one now without wasting any time let's just go ahead and test this out i've saved the file i'm gonna pop this up and then i'm just gonna say pi test now what we're just gonna see is that three tests were run successfully as you can see three passed so as i said it treats each of them as different tests so think of this as you are writing different or separate functions that is how it treats it which is good so right here you can see that we also have the three dots so this first dot represents this particular norm and expected pair. This second dot also represents this second norm and expected pair. And this third one represents this. Now let's say I say three is true. You're going to see that it's going to give us false for the middle one. So we're going to have F right here. So let's see that. If we come here, you can see that we have F. And we already know the reason why. It's just because... You know three is false and not true so this is how you can run parameterize testing in python using pytest now we're going to talk about exemption handling in tests so what we're going to tell you is to just basically explain why it is important to test how our code behaves when exceptions are raised so this is very crucial for ensuring robustness and reliability so for example, if we have like a valid in, an invalid input or failed states or, you know, basic errors that happens, we want to make sure that our test is able to pick up those errors. So let's just get straight into this. And I'm going to show you how to do this right here on our code. I'm going to close this. And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to create a basic function right here. And this function is just going to be a division function. So I'm going to say dev divide and I'll say a comma b and right here I'm just going to return a divided by b so this is just what this function does but what I want to do is to kind of say if b is equal to zero then I want to raise a value error of it cannot be divided by zero because no number can be divided by zero right so say if b is equals to zero, the raise value error cannot be divided by zero. We can just say cannot divide by zero. Right? This is this is all right. And what we're just gonna do is to come into test underscore app, and right here now we're gonna write the actual test. And what we're just going to do is to first make sure we have pytest installed and i mean imported and uh, we're just going to say dev we need to make sure we have this test prefix we need to make sure this is test and now we're going to say divide underscore trolls underscore value underscore error and now we're just going to say with test dot raises a value error because right here we have a value error so if it raises a value error it should raise a value error when we try to divide ten by zero now we need to make sure we have divide imported we save this now and then we run this test so i'm just going to do is to come here and run the test now you can see one test passed 
that is because when we try to divide 10 by 0 it actually raises that error which is what we have here right now if we say 10 divided by 1 it's not going to raise the error now because it's not going to raise the error this is going to fail now this has worked successfully this is basically how you can just kind of like write tests for specific exceptions like in python so like this was just a value error there can be zero division error which is probably what we are meant to use instead of value error but you know you can go sp more specific and into details you know when you're writing yours there is a ton of errors a ton of exceptions that we have in python but just to show you how this worked we use the value error so this is how to write a basic test for a value error right here using pytest now i'm going to talk to you about a platform called codium ai so i've been showing you and teaching you about testing unit testing and all of that and now i'm going to show you a platform that you can use to automate all of those tests so as you can see we wrote all the tests ourselves we did everything ourselves but if you want to automate these using the power of ai then you need to use codium ai so codium ai is basically a platform that allows us to automate the testing process it allows us to run tests in basically seconds and i'm going to show you how to use this right now so the first thing you need to do is to make sure that you download or install codium ai on vs code so they have compatibility for vs code and also JetBrains. but for this video i'm going to be showing you how to use this in vs code and they also have compatibility for every programming language so right here we're going to be talking about python but if you are on any other programming language you can also use this platform so what you just need to do is to come into vs code and then you need to open up the extensions tab so i'm just going to open up extensions right here and then once you open up extensions just search for codium we search for codium space ai and click on the first one right here this is the logo this is how it looks like so i'm just gonna make this smaller so you can see it properly now uh, this is codium ai this is how it looks like as you can see it, there it says generates meaningful tests so it's kind of like as you can see an ai agent that basically analyzes your code your functions and everything and it then generates tests for you i'm going to show you how this works it's actually quite powerful and useful now once you make sure you have this installed i already have it installed it's, go it's going to pop up like a prompt for you to log in so i use my github to log in so you need to log in with your github once you have been logged in or once you have downloaded this particular extension and once you've downloaded it and you are logged in and um, then we can use this so i'm going to close this test file because we don't really need it now throughout this course we've been writing functions manually i've shown you and taught you about the basic ways to write functions in python using pytest but now what we're going to do is now automate that and generate this test automatically using codium ai so this particular function that we've been using we're going to use the same function but instead of writing a test ourselves we're going to allow codium ai to do that so i'm just going to get rid of this value error and we're just going to leave it as a basic function for now so this is a very simple function that just takes two inputs and then returns the division of those inputs and now for us to now generate tests for this what we need to do is on top of every function once you have codium ai installed on top of every function you're going to see two options the first one is going to say codium ai options and the second one is going to say test this function for now we just want to say test this function so if i come here you're going to see it's going to generate some tests while it is generating i'm going to come here and show you the configuration so throughout this course we've been using the pytest framework and as you can see that is what codium ai also uses but there's another framework called unit test if you want to use that you could switch to that but we're going to stick with pytest now we go close this and you can see that it generates various functions for our testing so it generates various use case so this first one returns the correct value when dividing two positive integers this one does another thing so it generated like six different test functions for us and this is what we want it to do and what we're just going to do now is to run this particular test so this is good because this is also what i've been teaching of basically generating unit tests for various use cases that is what it did now what i'm going to do is to just run all of this test and it's going to prompt me and tell me that I'm, this test is going to be run on my machine 
I'm just gonna say yes proceed and then we're gonna give it a second to run those tests and as you can see this test was passed this test was passed this test was passed 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 and passed so there is no problem with our code and our test everything works successfully if our test wasn't passed if there was a problem or an error it's gonna say that the test was failed and it's also gonna tell you the reason why that test was failed it's gonna give you also how to fix that test or if there's something you need to fix with the code it's gonna tell you how to fix the code now this is how you can use this particular platform for running and generating tests quite useful and quite helpful now once this test has been generated if you don't want to use their platform to actually run the test you can just copy all of these test functions and paste it into our test file that we've been working with you could also do that so that that you could do that that is also another option but to make everything easier you could just run everything right here from Codium AI now we could get rid of this the next thing I want to talk about is the chat system if I come in here and I just open up Codium AI right here once you add Codium AI as an extension you're gonna see it right here So I'm just gonna expand this a little bit and right here you're gonna see that we basically have like this code assistant that we can use in our code so I'm going to show you what it does so it's as you can see it says welcome to Codium AI chat so your ultimate companion for managing your code and PRs now as you can see this particular chat system is focused on code and PRs to be precise it shows us what all of this does so if you see slash explain it's going to select the highlighted code and explain it so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to highlight this whole block and I'm going to say slash explain and we could add optional instructions if you want but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to click on enter so it's collecting all the context and it's just explaining it as you can see this is quite good I like the UI it says he has a detailed explanation of like one two three it's a divide function takes two input parameters a and b basically gives us every single thing we need this is very nice and this is what we want because this is very useful also not just only running tests but fixing your code fixing your test and all those type of stuff now if you come back to this function and we click on codium ai you're gonna see right here you have all the functions or all the options right here in one view so you could generate tests you could explain you could tell it to enhance your code so if i click on enhance you're gonna see that it's basically gonna like give us our code for in a better way so if i say apply changes you're gonna see what it just does is that it announces our code it says we can only get floats like this and then it gives us comments which is good this is what we want this is very useful so that is how you can use Codium AI to run tests which is very important and the main thing of this video and you can also use it to kind of check your code you know make your code better and all of those type of stuff right here from VS Code so once again, install Codium AI for free by just going to your extensions tab and searching up Codium AI and then clicking on install. But there will also be a link in the description below that will take you to Codium AI marketplace where you can install this particular extension. So I just decided to tell you about Codium AI because it's quite useful for this course also like it shows you how to automate everything we've been doing instead of writing everything yourself. It kind of shows you a better way of doing all of that. But the main thing is learning the basics, learning how it actually works, and learning how testing actually works, which is the main point of this video. And once you're done with that, then you could go into automating your tests, which is what we're using Codium AI for. Now we're going to be going into mocking in testing. So I'm going to be explaining what mocking is and why we even use it in testing. So mocking is a technique used in unit testing to simulate the behavior of real objects in a controlled way so it's kind of it's useful when dealing with external resources or objects with complex behaviors so mocking kind of helps to isolate the functionality being tested and ensures that tests are not dependent on external system or states now what exactly do we mean by mocking let me give like a scenario on when or why we want to use mocking so imagine testing interactions with external systems like databases or API, but you don't actually want to run this API to test them. That's when we use mocking. 
mocking kind of like simulates the whole process of like an api of returning a response of all of that and then runs a test on that simulation so we're not actually accessing an external api we're just mocking that external api so we're kind of creating a simulation that an api call is being made but it's not actually being made so i'm going to show you this particular example in code so you're going to understand exactly what we're talking about but let me give you another scenario so let's say an, when an actual object is impractical to use in tests so maybe due to reasons like it's very complex or the speed or you know any other reason another scenario can be like controlling the test environment such as simulating different responses or error conditions so anytime we want to use simulation of any response or error conditions or anything this is the best time to use mocking so now that you kind of have an overview of what mocking is i'm just gonna go straight into you know showing you how to practically do this so now for mocking we are not just going to use pytest we're going to use pytest and we're also going to use another particular framework called unit test now this framework is a built-in python module and we use it alongside pytest for mocking right now what we're going to do is to kind of create a like a, a test using mocking and we're going to be simulating an api call so what i'm going to do is as i said we're going to use unit test and python so we're going to use both of those modules and then we're going to create a mock object using unit test and then we're going to run a test on that you don't really need to understand that right now we're going to do that in a second so the example that we're going to be building so let's say like you have a function that calls an external api or as i said we don't really want to call any external api so we can mock this api call to test the function's behavior without actually making the network request so without actually like sending any api request now let's just get straight into this the first thing that we want to do is right here in app.py i'm just going to get rid of all of this and then i'm going to say dev function so this is a function i want to test so i can say function to test this is the main function and it's going to take an input i'm going to call it api client so just follow for now and i'm going to explain what all of this does in a bit and then i'm going to return api client dot get data now this get data just kind of holds the response so the response of this api call is what this get data is so we just want to return the response of that api call so now that you have that done the next thing that we want to do is to open up our test file and right here i'm gonna get rid of all of this thing to here right here Oops, like this and now what i want to do is to get this particular function to test so right here i'll say function to test which is what I need. And the next thing I want to do is to actually import PyTest. And now, as I said, we're going to be using unit test. So I'm going to say from unit test, we're not just using unit test directly. We're going to use the mock object. So I'm just going to say unit test dot mock. So we're going to use the mock method, sorry, to create a mock object. Import mock now we're going to create a fixture so we already talked about a fixture earlier in this tutorial we're going to create a fixture first of all so i'm going to say at pytest dot fixture we're going to create a function and say mock api client so we're creating the actual api client so this is where we like make the api calls suppose supposedly like so we're simulating the api call so say mock underscore client should be equals to mock so now we're creating a new mock object so the way we create a new mock object is that we create a new variable and then we give it the value of the mock that we imported and then we just add the brackets so now we're creating a new mock object by doing this and now what we just want to do is that right here we're going to say mock client which is the object we just created dot get data underscore data dot return 
underscore value equals to mocked data so now what we're just saying what this does is that as i said it's mocking the api call but then it's saying that the value that is returned from the api call or the api request is equals to mock data so this is the value or this is the response we get from that api call so as i said this is just simulating an api call and now we're just going to return mock client which was that object we're just returning mock client right here and now what we just want to do is to now write the actual test function so we're going to say def test underscore function remember we have to add this test prefix underscore function underscore with underscore mock and now we're going to give it this parameter remember right here we needed to give it an api client which is the old api call system but we already created that so we're just going to give it this mock api client and now in here we're going to say results we're going to have to specify what the result should be it'd be equals to function to test and then we're going to give it mock api client as i said this mock api client represents api client right here and then we're going to use the assert result should be equals to mock data because we know that the value is mock data so it should be equals to this if it's not equals to this then this test is failed but now we're going to say mock underscore api client dot get data dot assert underscore called once now this is just saying that this particular this particular call or this particular api call should just be called once so we're just simulating it by saying it should only be called once and not more than once so now the next thing that we're just going to do is to just go ahead and test this so i'm going to pop up a terminal right here and i'm going to run pytest so right here as you can see it gives us an error it's saying that there is no so attribute called get data so we're just gonna come down right here so right here it says there is no attribute called get data but we need to know where it is coming from so we're just gonna come here it says on the fixture there's no attribute called get data so there is an error here and what we're just gonna do is this is not meant to be mock api client because that's the name of the function i'm just going to get rid of this this is meant to be the object so which is mock client i'm just going to change this to mock client and this should work i'm just going to pop this up again everything should work perfectly fine now i'm gonna run pytest boom as you can see it says one passed successfully and right here once we have one dot which is green we already know it passed everything says 100 percent one passed in 0 0.01 seconds so right here as you can see everything is working successfully this is a basic way of how you can use mocking in testing it's a very advanced and powerful feature it can get more advanced than this so i'm just introducing you to how to use mocking right here in pytest and also unit test so this is the first time we're integrating unit test into what we're doing but this is good because now you're having an idea of how to use pytest for the fixture and then unit test for the actual mocking so once again what we mocked right here was an api call system so instead of actually going ahead and you know because there's really no point if you think about it if you think about it there's no point of actually trying to call an api just to test it we could just mock that api call and give it like a dummy data and that is what we did right here so that is how to use mocking in python testing so we have come to the end of this tutorial and i hope you enjoyed and understood everything we did in this tutorial if you have any questions you can drop it down in the comment i'll make sure to read through every comment and answer any questions that you might have but if you want to join the community where you can ask questions and get answers from other people also there will be a link in the description to my discord channel you can join my discord channel there's a lot of people there that will help you out with any question you might have and i'll also help you out if i see any questions so having that said you can join my discord channel 
and once again i hope you understood and enjoyed everything we did in this video if you did please don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to this channel and i'll see you in the next video